In a moment, you'll hear Robert Young starring in Father Knows Best, but first, this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening on most NBC radio stations, listen to the great comedy shows presented by Phil Harris and Alice Faye and by Bob Hope. There's mile-a-minute fun on the fast-paced Bob Hope Show when tomorrow night he trades gags and songs with guest star Bob Crosby. Of course, Les Brown and his band of renown will be on hand to furnish the musical backing. And you'll be pleasantly entertained by all concerned. So make it a date to hear the Bob Hope Show tomorrow evening. And then stay tuned for Phil Harris and Alice Fay in another half hour of mirth and music. Friday's fun day on NBC Radio. And now it's Father Knows Best on NBC. <laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons. Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. Not too many years ago, an ingenious inventor by the name of Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. This is an instrument which makes it possible for two people to talk to each other, even though they may be some distance apart. It's done with wires. Now, the telephone turned out to be a pretty popular gadget. In fact, so many people acquired telephones that there just wasn't wire enough to give everyone a private line. So, some people have party lines. In the town of Springfield, the Andersons have just been placed on a party line. And it's creating considerable interest. Like this. <laughs> Bud, what are you doing? Shh, I'm listening. You ought to hear this conversation. Bud Anderson, put down that telephone. What's the matter? You're not supposed to listen to other people's conversations. Why not? They didn't know I was listening. <laughs> Margaret, I'm home. We're in the den, dear. Oh, hello, honey. Hello, dear. How was your day? Fine. Oh, hello, Bud. What are you doing? Just standing here. Ah, <laughs> uh, this has been a real good day, Margaret. Remember Don Sheridan? His wife's the big wheel in the social set. Yes, I had a note from Mrs. Sheridan today. Yeah. Well, I met him today, and he mentioned that his wife wanted you to join some exclusive club that she runs or something. That's what she said in the note. I couldn't believe it. Nice people to know. If things go right, I just might get the insurance on that automobile agency of his. A big, fat account. Well, there's a saying in town, if you're in with the Sheridans, you're in, period. <laughs> I think I'll call Pauline Chambers and tell her about that note from Mrs. Sheridan. She knows her quite well. So we went to see them. Oh, and those people are still them. talking. They What's the matter, somebody on our line? Right. Yes. The phone company called this morning and said we'd have to be on a party line temporarily till I get some new equipment or something. I wonder who they are. Who are you talking about? I was just wondering who the people are on our line. Well, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's a good thing to have somebody else on the line. Give us a little rest around here. In fact, the way the kids use this telephone, those people, whoever they are, will be lucky if they get a chance to call the operator. <laughs> oh, this chair feels good. This evening paper? <laughs> That's it. I'm a little concerned. About what? Well, it seems the new people have been on the line every time I picked up the phone today. Oh, just coincidence. I hope we don't have any <laughs> trouble with them. Did you see this little story here on the first page? I haven't looked at the paper. Story about a couple who got married down in Texas the other day. What's so unusual about a couple getting married in Texas? I imagine it happens every day. Yeah, but get this. The groom was 90 years old and the bride was 87. <laughs> oh? They're taking a honeymoon trip to Florida on a tandem bicycle. <laughs> well, that's interesting. What does it prove, dear? I don't know. I guess it shows that people, as they grow older nowadays, are younger than they used to be. Uh, yes, I suppose so. Well, it's true. Look at us, for instance. I don't want to go to Florida on a bicycle. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, what I mean, honey, is that 40 or 50 years ago, people our age considered themselves middle-aged. What are you leading up to? <laughs> well, a kind of an interesting thing happened today. I was downtown and... Mother, have you seen my red shoes? I can't... Oh, excuse me, Father. Go ahead, Princess. No, you were talking and I interrupted. What were you saying? Oh, I was just telling your mother that sort of an interesting thing happened downtown today. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to explain. What happened? Why is it hard to explain? Well, it's uh, odd. I was in the car driving along, and this other car pulled up and sort of drove alongside of me. I thought at first it was some friend of ours, somebody I knew. But then I looked over to see who it was, and I didn't recognize her. Her? A woman? Yeah. And a quite young and attractive woman. And she kept looking over at me and smiling. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? <laughs> An attractive girl smiled at your father, Betty. Now, don't spoil it. Let him live a little. <laughs> After all, it's not uh, impossible. I didn't say it was impossible. It just seems... I mean... Well, why? Princess, I didn't ask her why. And I only mentioned it because it seemed kind of interesting and uh, unusual. She probably thought you were someone she knew. A friend of her father's, maybe. Possibly. But it seemed so odd. She could see very plainly we weren't more than ten feet apart. I can understand it, dear. You're just young-looking and handsome and irresistible. Oh, now, honey, I didn't say that. You're being silly, Mother. At father's, <coughs> at father's age. Now, just a minute. Let's leave my age out of this. On the other hand, though, it follows. What follows? Our psychology prof was saying yesterday how you can always tell when a man has reached middle age. He begins to think young girls are smiling at him. <laughs> Why, Betty. Princess, the only reason I mentioned the incident was because... Oh, by the way, Mother, I'm having dinner over at Janie Liggett's, if it's all right. I don't mind if Mrs. Liggett invited you. Guess I'd better call and tell Janie it's okay. When you go upstairs, will you bring me That's that book funny. Is there somebody on our line? And, uh, oh, no, they're not still the talking. Five they're not the talking. Table. But the receiver must be off the hook. I can hear a conversation like in a room. Well, hang up, Betty. Don't listen. I wasn't listening. Oh, don't be grumpy, Father. Just because I told you what our psychology... Prop... That has nothing to do with it. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Hi, Angel. Kitten. I was going to stay over at Patty Davis's, but I didn't. I came home. What happened? Oh, Patty's father thinks he's so cute. Always dancing around and acting silly. I like my daddy a lot better. Well, thank goodness I have someone on my side. <laughs> oh, Father, don't be so touchy. I like you a lot better, Daddy. Thank you, kitten. You're a nice old daddy. No. <laughs> Now, wait, just... That was the wrong thing to say, Shrimp Boat. You're in trouble now. Princess, do you mind... I didn't say anything. Uh, Betty, you'd better come out in the kitchen with me. Now, kitten, all I right, know I seem old right, but I don't see why Father is so sensitive actually, all of younger, a sudden. Well, there? I'll explain it to you. All I said was that... The point is, Betty, that your father has reached the age where he's not really old at all. But he needs to have someone assure him that he isn't. Yeah. Well, I'm going over to Janie's. We'll probably go to the library. I won't be late. Call us if you want us to pick you up. I will. <sighs> this family, trying to keep everyone happy. Dear, are you still in the den? Yes, I'm still here. Where'd Kathy go? I don't know. She gave her nice old daddy a pat on his nice old head and disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim, stop being silly. You know the children say things, they don't mean it, they don't even think. I don't know. You know the old saying about truth from the mouths of babes. Oh, fiddle. I wasn't going to say this, but uh, I'm positive that Mr. and Mrs. Sheridan are inviting us into their crowd just because of you. Oh, undoubtedly. 
Probably think I'll make a peachy chaperone. Hey, Dad. What is it, bud? What goes with our phone? I've been trying to get Joe for an hour. There's always somebody on there yakking away. Oh, dear. Who can they be talking to? Yakety, yakety, yakety. Well, they can't talk forever. Just wait till they hang up. I've been waiting. And I have calls to make. I want to call Pauline and ask her about Mrs. Sheridan. How to approach her and all. I'll admit I'm a little nervous. Nervous? Why? Well, I've never met the Sheridans. We want to make a good impression. Don't worry. We will. I know she's been around asking questions about us. People have told me. Now, relax, Margaret. You'll find out soon enough what kind of people we are. I just got to get hold of Joe. Why don't you go over there? No, I told him I'd call him. What's the matter with you, bud? Can't use the phone. Somebody on there gabbing away. They won't quit. Have you tried the phone here in the breakfast room? It's the same one as in the den. This is just an extension. Are they still talking? I simply can't believe that. Yeah, they're still at it. Women always talking. Why don't you tell them to hang up? No, they wouldn't. You know the whole trouble. They're on the same line we're on. Let's get them off. Yeah. How? I don't know. Maybe we could scare them off. How? Well, what if they thought we were a bunch of gangsters or something? Real tough. Yeah. Look, uh, I'll put the phone here on the table so they can hear us talking. Okay. Well, kid, I guess the old man did all right when he knocked over the bank last night. Yeah, Pop's a real good burglar. Hey, they stopped talking. They're listening. God. He said I could go with him on his next job. It isn't going to be much. We're going to hijack a beer truck. Oh, goody. Then we can have beer. <laughs> I got to oil up my gat. Pop says we may have to plug a couple of guys. Hey, it worked. They hung up. Boy, you're pretty smart, bud. I wonder who they are. I don't know. One name, it kind of seems like I heard somewhere. Mrs. Sheridan. <laughs> well, we sure fixed her, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we sure did. Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. There's wonderful radio entertainment all day long when you keep your dial tuned to this same NBC station. You'll enjoy such fun-packed programs as the Bob Hope Daytime Show, Tommy Bartlett's Welcome Travelers, Jay Stewart with It Pays to Be Married, and a host of others. So be sure to keep your dial set to the NBC radio network. You'll hear your favorite daytime dramas on NBC, too. Such perennial favorites as The Road of Life, Pepper Young's Family, The Right to Happiness, Backstage Wife, Stella Dallas, The Woman in My House, and Young Widder Brown. All of these well-liked daytime programs are yours for the listening every weekday, Monday through Friday, on the NBC Radio Network. Remember what we said about looking into the future? It just can't be done. And with conditions shaping up as they are in the white frame house on Maple Street, maybe it's a good thing. It's bad enough to know what's happened already, what with Bud and Kathy trying to discourage the people on the Anderson's party line. No, we won't even think about what might happen next. Let's just go back to Margaret and Jim in the den, happily unaware of what transpired in the breakfast room a few moments ago. You know, you're right, dear. Hmm? Right about what? I shouldn't worry about what kind of an impression we'll make on Mrs. Sheridan. Of course not. We're a perfectly respectable family. That's what I told you. I think I'll call Pauline anyway. Well, wonder of wonders... The people on our line have hung up. I told you they would. You just have to be patient, that's all. It's just that I've heard that Mrs. Sheridan is so, well, strict and proper about everything. Uh, hello, Pauline. This is Margaret. Fine. Say, I have some news. I received an... Uh, Pauline, something's just come up. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Bye. Well, now what? Jim, I distinctly heard a receiver being picked up. Those people on our line were listening in. Oh, honey, you're letting your imagination run away with you. Why would anyone want to listen? I don't know, but I heard them lift the receiver. Jim, there must be some way of finding out who those people are. There is. Ask them. Oh, you can't do that. I don't see why not. Hey, Mom, you should have heard it. Heard what? 
Kathy and I fixed those people on our line. I bet they won't bother us anymore. What have you been doing? We scared them out. They were gabbing away, so I left the phone off the hook, and Kathy and I talked real loud so they could hear us. Oh, bud. After they heard us, I'll bet they'll never use the phone again. They might even leave town. I don't understand. It was a slick idea. We pretended like Dad was a gangster. What? <laughs> sure. Scare him. We said a lot of stuff about how you robbed a bank and you and I were going to hijack a beer truck. <gasps> <laughs> but you didn't. Well, what's wrong with it? You want him to quit hogging the line, don't you? Yes, but not... You should have heard him. Boy, did they hang up the phone quick. They didn't want to take any chances with tough characters like us. But you shouldn't have done that. We don't know who those people are. Well, you don't have to worry. They're nobody we know. Somebody named Mrs. Sheridan. Well, it doesn't make any... <gasps> Sheridan! Uh-oh, that does it. Bud, are you sure? Well, I heard one woman call the other one Mrs. Sheridan. Why, is it somebody you know? Somebody I know? Bud, she's... she's... Oh, this is the end, the absolute end. Why? Bud Anderson, you stood right here in this den when I was talking about Mrs. Sheridan. Maybe that's where I heard the name. Oh, <laughs> oh no. That explains why she was listening in on my conversation. After what she heard before... Oh, what am I going to do, Jim? What am I going to do? Now, just calm down, honey. Don't do uh, anything. I didn't know who she was. Bud, you stood right on that very spot and heard me... I wasn't listening. Margaret, please, now be reasonable. You know as well as I do that Mrs. Sheridan, a grown-up, intelligent woman, is not going to be taken in by a couple of kids playing gangsters. Oh, you're right. She wouldn't. She'd know it was just the children acting silly. She'd overheard adults talking. That would be different. I'll get it, honey. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Jim. Yes? This is Mimi. <laughs> uh, Mimi who? You do not know me, Jim, but I know you. For days and days I watch you, and then today you smile at me. Well, you uh, must have the wrong party. I, I... No, no, doll, baby. <laughs> you are the right party. My heart tells me so. Jim, who is it? Uh, some girl. Today, when you drive your car alongside mine, and I smile at you, and you smile at me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that. This is the moment I live for. Oh, baby. Well, now wait, I, I, I didn't... Uh... I dream of you every night, ever since I first see you. Me? I, I mean, well, how Jim, did you... Jim, hang up. Hang up. Uh, my wife says to hang up. <laughs> Doll, baby, you have a wife. Oh, no. Look, I, I don't know how you found me, but... I find you if you are at the end of the earth. Oh, today, when your eyes looked into mine, I knew... I knew you were the one. But uh, I'm not the one. Jim, hang up. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss... Uh... Doll, baby. Promise we'll meet again. Promise. No, I, uh, uh, I can't. Hang up. Uh, goodbye, Miss... If it must be, it must be. Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, doll, baby. <laughs> Jim, what in the world? How do you like that? That woman I told you about, the one that smiled at me this morning, must have found the number somehow. What did she want? Me, I guess. <laughs> Jim, I just know Mrs. Sheridan was listening in on the line. What did the woman say? Oh, my gosh. What did she say? Well, she said she dreamed of me every night. Oh. Uh, Called me her doll baby. Oh, well, that's all. I can imagine what sort of people Mrs. Sheridan thinks we are by now. Why didn't you explain to her? To Mimi? Oh, <laughs> that surely wasn't her name, Mimi. 
Honey, I didn't have anything to do with this. I can't help it if women track me down. Oh, <laughs> oh Jim. Well, we're finished, that's all. This will be all over town. You know how people talk. Now, honey, it's easily explained. How? Well, this girl just called me up, that's all. What could I do? It can't be explained. But you believe me, don't you, honey? She drove her car alongside mine. Can I help it if she... Well... You and your fatal fascination. Well, it's not my fault. I can't help it. I'll get it. I'd better answer it. If this is Mimi... Hello? Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Sheridan. Yes, yes, I received your note. Yes, I'll be at home. Oh, I'd, I'd be delighted to see you. All right. Goodbye. Well? Mrs. Sheridan. She's coming right over. Why don't we just gather up the children and leave? Well, what did she say? She has something to speak to me about, and it's quite important. I know she heard everything. First, Bud, now you and Mimi. I can't face her, that's all. I just won't be here. Now, wait a minute, Margaret. If she wants to jump at conclusions, let her jump. We've done nothing wrong. This whole thing is... A... Mother! We're in here, Betty. I decided not to go to the library after all, so I... What's the matter? The roof has just fallen in. Well, what do you mean? You'd better start packing your things, Betty. Before this is over, we'll probably have to leave town. I don't get it. Well, Princess, it seems your doddering old father has charmed a certain unknown French lady named Mimi right out of her socks. <laughs> oh, Father, you're kidding. He didn't do it intentionally, that we know. But it's been done. This, this Mimi called up here, the one who smiled at him in the car this morning. <gasps> she didn't. Yes, she did. How she tracked me down, I'll never understand, but you know how some women are. Don't look so proud of yourself. <laughs> well, let's face it, honey. It isn't every day a man my age turns out to be quite so devastating. Oh, fiddle. Well, if you're so devastating, maybe you'd like to explain how all this happened to Mrs. Sheridan. Sure, I'll explain to her. No, you won't. There's a car stopping out in front. There she is. What am I going to say to her? I don't think it's important. I'm much more interested in father and this sudden charm. Betty, stop it. He's completely unmanageable now. <laughs> well, there she is. I suppose there's nothing to do but go and face it. I'll talk to her if you want, honey. Never mind. Mrs. Anderson? Yes, I'm Mrs. Sheridan. Uh, won't you come in? Thank you. You must think it a little odd, my calling you and coming over this way. But there's something I feel we must discuss. Uh, yes, I, I think I understand. Uh, won't you come into the living room? Thank you. Uh, I believe I know why you're here, Mrs. Sheridan. Yes, I thought you would know. Well, I suppose it isn't necessary to explain that we somehow came to share the same telephone line. No, it isn't necessary to explain. But please believe me, what you heard, it... Well, I'm terribly embarrassed. Did you hear everything that I heard? I either heard it or heard about it. But How you much must... did Mr. Anderson get when he knocked over the bank? <laughs> Mrs. Must Sheridan. Must be interesting work. Hijacking beer trucks. <laughs> Please, you know how children are. You know that was all made up. Oh, I sort of guessed it was. I have children of my own, you know. Thank goodness. But Mrs. Anderson, or uh, may I call you Margaret? Oh, please do. Your husband. And I'll admit I listened on the party line. Your husband and Mimi. <laughs> There's something you should know. I know all about it, Mrs. Sheridan. Believe me, it's nothing. That's what you think. There's something about Mimi that you don't know. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Sheridan. I'm uh, Mr. Anderson. Well, doll, baby. <laughs> Uh, 
It's uh, silly, absolutely silly. I, I, I don't know this girl, this uh, Mimi. But she's a perfect stranger. Oh, no, she isn't. She isn't? He knows her very well. But uh, uh, who is she? Your daughter, Betty. No. Betty? You see, after you hung up, Jim, I, who had been listening to the whole thing, talked to Mimi. When she learned who I was, she explained what she had done and why. Why, that rascal. So I knew I had to come over here right away because I knew how you must be feeling, Margaret. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Mimi. <laughs> oh, well, that's all I wanted to tell you, Margaret. I'll see you at the club meeting. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Doll, baby. <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you, I think. Oh, uh, by the way, we're getting our private phone lines back tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, my irresistible charmer. Where is that girl? <laughs> Betty? Betty? Up here. Go, oh, baby. <laughs> The Andersons will be back in just a moment. Every weekday evening, you'll enjoy a visit with one of America's most famous couples, Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, every evening, Monday through Friday, the NBC Radio Network brings you an amusing adventure at 79 Wistful Vista with Marion and Jim Jordan portraying their ever-famous roles of Fibber and Molly. You'll chuckle with delight at the wonderful situations in which Fibber becomes embroiled. Yes, it's truly entertaining listening from beginning to end, five nights a week, right here on the NBC Radio Network. Make it a date to hear Fibber McGee and Molly every night. You'll be glad you did. And remember to keep abreast of the latest news of the world. Be sure to listen to Morgan Beatty's news reports weekday evenings on NBC Radio. <laughs> Well, it's hard to believe, but the Andersons came through the day with no damages, outside of Jim's slightly wounded pride. He's nursing that injury right now as he sits in the living room with Margaret, still trying to explain. Well, things like that do happen, honey. Oh, Jim. All right. I remember Fred Hathaway. Some girl called him up. He didn't know who she was. Turned out he'd given her his seat on a bus two years before. <laughs> a likely story. Besides, I'm not the world's ugliest man. Second ugliest, maybe, but not the ugliest. I know, dear. By the way, where's Betty? Oh, she went out somewhere. The point I'm trying to make, Margaret, is that it's not impossible that some young lady might, just might, find me attractive. Sure, sure. Probably for me. I'll get it. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. It's for you, dear. Me? Who is it? Some southern girl named Laura says she just has to talk to you. Well, what do you know? When you finish, dear, tell Betty if she's near the grocery to bring home some potatoes. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Gene Vanderpile, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Virginia Gregg. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, is written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. <laughs> Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.